All right, so this is what happens usually. If you consider any leg, you know, there's a very strong leg going up. You look at this and find the range and the midpoint, which is here. And then if you're looking for a second leg, the market is now correcting down. The distance that this drops has something to do with what's going to happen next. So if we get retracement and you you measure this just eyeball, it doesn't have to be accurate. If you want to categorize this, there are usually, I think, three main categories. It's about 30% of the prior leg. It's about 50% of the prior leg. It's about 70, 75% of the prior leg. The deeper this goes, as it goes down deeper and deeper and deeper, the result is more trading range behavior. All right. So if it drops lower than 50% and gets down to here, then usually the bounce from this, you, you're still going to get a second leg in more than like 60, 70% of times. Actually, probabilities are higher than that. But then this itself has to go a very long way up there to create a breakout. Because as you know, the leg one, leg twos are usually symmetrical. So A, B, C, D. And usually A, B is almost equal to CD. But when when this drops, when C drops a lot lower, then the trend that was supposed to form and it was supposed to be looking like this going up, then it still looks like that, but it looks like this. So it becomes more of a trading range rather than a channel. And it depends on, on the percentage of the pullback. The deeper it goes to pull back, the higher the probability that it will have more of that trading range tendencies. And that's what you will usually see. The other thing is that we have two legged moves up, and pullbacks are also two legged. At this junction, is this the second leg from breakout from this, if this is the breakout? Or is this the pullback of the pullback? There's always that question. Usually, most cases, especially if the pullback starts strongly like that day, it's this one rather than this one. Would that be like bars 12 and 13? Is that the second yeah. leg up to bar? Eight? You never know. You never know in advance. Uh, also because the market's price action is fractal. So this will have probably a second leg, which looks something about this size. So this might not be enough, really. And this will probably have a second leg, which is closer to the size of a B leg from the six high to 11 low. So is this the second leg from this? Probably not. Is mm -hmm. this the second leg from this? Well, it looks correct. So it can be. This is the gray fog thing that Al talks about all the time. Like you never exactly know which one belongs to which leg, but price action structure is such that it usually tries to achieve symmetry. Therefore, if the legs do not look completely right, I mean, size-wise, then they are probably not right. Like there are, occasions that you have a single bar for the second leg and that's all that you get i'm going to point it out if i if i see it um this might be it it, it usually happens when there is range compression as well so big bar down or 71 might get the second leg but the second leg is just this one bar 73 and it's smaller than the first leg because the first leg began from the high of 70 down to here so this this is much bigger than this single bear bar here it's still two legs but the second leg is compressed 
this happens when the market is creating uh, triangles or any kind of range compression. On days that you see more trending behavior, like these big bars and breakouts, there is more tendency to create symmetry. And on those days, you should really look for that symmetry and then use it as a filter to say, okay, this this went down quite a lot. I mean, probably second leg is going to be symmetrical to this. Therefore, 14 is likely just a pullback from the first leg of the pullback. So interesting, right? So because we have a breakout, we have a pullback. A pullback has a pullback. And the pullback of a pullback has a pullback, right? But that's how, how it works. When things are big and strong, they get pullbacks of their own. But eventually, all of these are fractal components of a complex pullback, which is two legs. And it has three parts here and three or four parts here. And then the, the market starts to resume.